Now, how did you get started in the world of voice acting? Well, what happened was that um, when I was in high school, they had this um, this class of sorts called Senior Project, which is meant to be like a job exploration thing. Some people have their dream jobs, and they would explore their dream job and find out if it's really their thing or not. Some people wanted to be a disc jockey, but learned that it's not their thing. So if you are set and you're confident that it won't bug you then explore something else I thought I'd be a writer they gave me a test and said hey you could, you could be a taxidermist or a magician according to these results <laughs> and I was just like I don't know who to job shadow for those other two so I do however know how to get in touch with a voice actor so I job shadowed him got to see how he worked was so inspired by how trained he was and how that it took focus and it, it really was a craft that he had to learn instead of just making funny voices in a booth and i was just inspired since that um digimon um, recording session yeah it was and it served like it was ah, it's to me it, it those uh, those recording sessions can be up to like three hours long yeah. and i was not bored at all he was all like you were bored because i kept doing retakes right and i said no no give me more and then he just said okay just keep okay, this is where you go next. I um, checked out a studio to do more interviews because you got to get more than one mm -hmm. angle on the voice acting thing. Right. Sat in on another recording session. Didn't get bored with that one either. And um, for a while they said, you know what, you have guts because no one really asked them to do school projects or anything like that. So they said, okay, why don't we have you come in and um, be a part of this Wallace session? And for the people who don't know, a Wallace session is kind of like... Um, it stands for with all actors, and what they tend to do during those is sort of like all those background noises, they basically have a lot of people do them. Some, sometimes they have the same three people do them and have them do so many takes, it might as well be a hundred people. And I got to be in the anime Tweeny Witches that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, and from there it's sort of like, what do I do next? So I just took a lot of classes, practiced and recorded for a lot of online projects. And the thing is that if you do it, some do something long enough eventually you build a body of work and you go places cool and um now you got to work on skull girls what was it like being a uh, misfortune in the it was a lot the of fun and um the story behind that one is also very involved because i was a fan of alex ahad's artwork since um since i saw it on guy online Be <laughs> and i was all like i didn't know about skull girls until i was like i want to see more of his artwork and this was before his project got like any backing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, do you need voice talents for this? And he said, sure, we'll have you try out because I bet lots of people want to work on that. And um, I, I, and he said, sure, you can try out for these characters when I have actual lines. And the ones he thought I would be the best at would be Peacock or Misfortune. And I really, really, really wanted Peacock. <laughs> and clearly I didn't get it. Aww. But so I was just gunning for Pain Wheel because she was the next cool one to me. And then what happened is sort of like, okay, here are the misfortune sides. And we're like, I still gonna get pain wheel. So, okay, you want one take with an accent, one take without. And I was all like, okay, do the accent. And then one just derp around. <laughs> it's, I just want pain wheel. And I guess you can't be in charge of what roles you get because they wanted me to be misfortune with my normal voice. So it was a lot of fun doing all the meowing and cat buns though. All right, cool. And um, what can fans expect when they visit your YouTube page? Oh, me being really strange and derping everywhere. But I try, I try to have a lot of original content, flex my writing skills because I did. I am a screenwriting major, and since I did more voice acting, I might fall out of practice. So I'm like, okay, let's go practice learning how to write short time limit kind of things. Mm -hmm. And plus, I get to write stuff that most people wouldn't cast me for. So I just probably. Oh, practice other parts of my range mm -hmm. and a lot of the time whenever people I record with give me permission to do this I usually ask them or they just tell me to do it I would occasionally record um, live recording sessions because at first I said okay um, I think I I was sitting in during a panel at a convention where Kari, Kari Walgren says okay watch yourself when you voice act and I'm like how can I do that while I'm acting? But <laughs> so I thought, okay, let's do this differently. Am I expressing enough? So at first I was just doing it for reference. Yeah. But over time, people who were, especially the people who were less experienced, they would watch and say, oh, you are really involved in that. Or they would learn, oh, that's, you're trying too hard. But basically a lot of people would give me feedback and I didn't really work with them because it's already in the past. I resubmitted my lines, but it's still interesting and a few times i actually got some work that way because they got to see that i wasn't just sitting in one place going i do voice acting but if they actually saw that i got into the roles i did 
Cool. And um, now tell us about your work as Rarity in uh, Fighting His Magic. Oh, boy. Um, it was another one of those, well, okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll get this or not, but Rarity is best pony, so I will try out, because <laughs> Fluttershy is a really close second for me. And they didn't have Fluttershy to audition for, obviously. Um, I know that one of the bigger challenges was to copy Tabitha's performance. In truth, I always had that voice, it just never got to use it very much. I did basically... Um, it's a very, it's a practice of the mid-Atlantic-ish British accent, and I've been always doing that. But I already had a role as um, Lady Weybridge in Detective Grimoire. It's going to come out soon for the iOS or other mobile devices, hopefully for the PC. But you know that's not out yet. No one knows I can do that accent, so I just tweaked it because I've been pre- practicing it for years. I just never had a chance to show it, and streamlined it into fitting it as close as possible, and. Um, I just got the part. <laughs> but I did realize that um, it, since Main 6 is different from, different from other projects, they do have different demands. They are set in a different universe, and they did ha- have to direct me a bit, which I appreciate a lot because I want to achieve their vision. Yeah. And um, what they did is sort of like, okay, we want this to be like set in their world. Don't, don't go like hyper violent. I know you're into it, Kimlin, but we don't want Rarity to die. <laughs> so, I, so I had to tone it down, but make it still realistic. So it's not like, eh. So I think the, what I had the most fun doing is doing the improv because it helped me flex and show that I did understand this character enough to make, the, make up things that she would say. And that was a lot of fun. I really, really hope to play the game soon. I usually always miss the opportunity to. Fingers crossed for this one. Um, and do you have any other works in the pony world? Yes, I do. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in my little portal, <laughs> and I, I as um, Rarity or Rarity Core. Um, she didn't show up yet, to my knowledge. Maybe something released. I'm, I do know. That I saw up to episode two. I'm also in a, another. M- my little pony crossover with portal thing i the producer's gonna hurt me because i forgot the name but uh, but i am in that one too and it's a really well-known one um it'll, it'll just be a surprise because i'm in the finale anyways and um i'm also a part of a few things that basically p- more people would like to keep a surprise but I am part of a bunch of the announcement messages for um, Equestria LA with um, Rena Chan. Okay. And, yeah. Rarity, I play Rarity and Luna. Okay. And uh, now, how were you approached about coming to uh, Camel- uh, Cantalark Gardens? How was that? How did they get in contact with you? Um, email. <laughs> but um, I assume that what happened was sort of like since they invited Main Six, why well, might as well have the rest of the talents? Okay. And then I just came along, and I'm very happy that they thought about me. Okay. And um, are you enjoying your time here at this convention so far? Yes, I mean, this is probably my second con that it has a big pony fan base. And it's, um, it makes me really happy to see all the pony cosplays because it's very, it's very creative seeing their Gijinkas kind of um, outfits. Because I'm like, oh, let me see which pony you are. And there's also, I, I always love this the most, is sort of like they always try to reserve the first two, two or so, so rows for the kids. Yeah. Which I appreciate because I'm like, oh, they are the targeted demographic. <laughs> All right, and um, now is there any way fans can keep up with you on the internet, like a YouTube, or your YouTube page, um, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, anything like that? Yes. Aside from my YouTube, I also have a Facebook page. Um, it's pretty much facebook.com slash Hanilmic. And um, what I try to do is for whatever website I'm on, I try to keep a whole giant pile of links anyways for people to not get lost and grab the wrong one. And um, I'm also on Newgrounds because that's where, that's, that's where I grew up in the yeah. voice acting thing. And there's a whole bunch of other places, but if they're interested, they can check out my drawings on Tumblr, occasional random stuff if I make it onto <laughs> DeviantArt. But the main stuff I'm on is YouTube, Facebook, and Newgrounds. Okay, and um, is there any uh, current or upcoming projects you can talk about this time that you want fans to know about? Um, I, I did mention Detective Grimoire, and um, Dust in Elysian Tale got released a while ago. Yeah, it's for the Xbox 360. I voiced Fidget in that one, and um, it's, it's a very, very pretty game, and it's pretty much... Aside from other people who pretty much lended a hand because this guy, this guy works so hard, it's made by one guy. Wow. 
Yeah, so it, you can tell that there was a lot of love put into this. And and um, I really want to share that one. Uh, I'm also in Rival Threads, which is also for the mobile device at market. Um, I voice Maya Pendleton in that one. And there's just a bunch more stuff, but it's just escaping my mind. And I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for coming out here and talking with us. Thank you so much. Yes, likewise. Thank you for having me.